G'day everyone. Before we get into the wrap-up video uh, with Adrian and Ellen, we just wanted to mention that Holly and I, mainly Holly, have wrote an ebook on the canning stock route. Pretty much everything we wish we knew before we left. Tips, tricks, uh, conditions between wells, what else? Yeah, helpful information. We also then go through our um, experience from well to well, so you'll be able to see what we went through on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we really hope you find this ebook helpful. If you did purchase our Big Lap ebook, that is still up for sale on our website, but it's a very similar format, but specific for the canning stock route. Yes, so it's 52 pages long, it's full of beautiful photos, kind of got almost like our diary entries from day to day. Uh, but yeah, we think it's really good and it's going to be really helpful if you are keen to do the canning stock route. I'd highly recommend it. What are we going to sell it for? $19.95? Yep. Cool, $19.95. <laughs> so uh, if you're keen on this video, I think it'll be a really good companion to this video and uh, something that you can use while you are on the canning stock route. Exactly. We will put a link for the ebook down in our description. You'll also be able to find it on our website for sale as well. All right, so let's start the wrap up. Cheers. Hello and welcome to this special Overland Travelers episode. If you've been thinking about doing the canning stock route, then this episode is for you. We are going to be running through the entire trip and everything we wish we knew before we left. G'day everyone and welcome to this canning wrap up. So we did the canning recently as a group. Unfortunately, Cam and Court aren't here. They're up in Mackay, but they would have loved to have been here for the wrap up. Uh, we are down in Tumba, well, up in Tumbarumba, I should yeah, say. Yeah, up, up in the beautiful snowy mountains. So we're at uh, Adrian's Winery, Obsession Wine. So as you can see yeah, behind us. Nothing would have gave it away that we're a location. <laughs> yeah. Slightly different backdrop to our usual setup, I'd say. Yeah, red dirt, dust, wind. We're inside. That's right. Uh, so essentially, this video is going to be, uh, if you want to do the canning stock route, this is everything we think you should know before you do it. Um, handy tips, tricks, Ks, stats that we did, fuel used, food, water, uh, things to think about and look out for. We're going to run through it all today, just so you're, you will be more prepared to do the canning yourself. Yeah, all that stuff you look for, or we also look for on our expeditions and that, and be here. Alrighty, well, uh, should we get started with uh, what the canning actually is? Yes. I'll start with that one. <laughs> so the canning stock route is an old stock route, but essentially it was to ferry stock from the north of WA down south. I think after it was first built, it wasn't used much. And then in recent years, it has been used for four-wheel drive four drivers, I guess. Yeah. Um, so essentially we did the canning stock route the very end of May heading into June. We were on the track for 16 days um, and our trip started from Alice Springs. So Alice Springs was where we did our big food shop. We filled up with all of our fuel, water, etc. Yep. So we did the track north to south. Yeah. Uh, there's obviously two ways you can do it. Um, that is counted as the harder way. North to yeah. south, because you are doing the leeward side of the dunes. So if you were going south to north, uh, you are, it's an easier approach on the dunes. So just keep that in mind. Uh, there is two ways to start the track. Uh, but the track essentially starts if you're starting north in Halls Creek, Halls Creek yeah. or Billaluna, Billaluna. Uh, yeah. the indigenous community there, which uh, is the last opportunity you can get fuel. And we did fill up there and it cost us $3.30. Yeah, three three thirty there, yeah. Which everyone's going to say that's very expensive, but someone has to take the fuel there. Now, we drove 870 plus Ks to get to Bullaluna. So yeah. someone has to drive the fuel there on the roads that you've just driven on. So Exactly. Yeah. And actually, for how expensive fuel is at the moment, I thought $3.30 wasn't too bad. They could charge $5 a litre and you would just have to pay for it. So I think one thing to know about the canning is even getting to either start point of the canning is an adventure in itself. Yeah. We went through Outback New South Wales, Outback South yep. Australia, Alice Springs, and then up the Tanami, which is just a huge trip. I mean, you know, that's what people would just count as a, a trip in itself. Yeah, that's a journey for some people just in itself. Like, that is, an, that is a trip. All righty. So, getting started on the track. So, on the canning stock route, pretty much you run by wells. So, there's 51 
Wells on the Canning Stock Route. And uh, it's a good point of reference for you on the map or for anyone else that's on the track. You can say, oh, you know, we're around well 26 or generally during the day, you probably think, all right, well, it's this far between this well and that well. That's kind of the distance we want to hit today. Uh, so we started up at well 51 and started, yeah, working our yeah, way down. Traversing our way down. And your days, your days in between wells do vary in your distance you'll achieve in a day, mm -hmm. just to sort of throw in some numbers. We averaged 16 to 33 kilometres an hour. 16 was our lowest. 33 was our fastest. Which isn't much when you're doing it over 16 days. Just note that. Another thing to note, just quickly talking about kilometres um, and how long it takes you, you need to be prepared to do the same thing day in, day out. It's definitely a test on your endurance and your vehicle's endurance. Yeah, the, the scenery does change and it varies the whole, the whole way along it. Like, the massive changes along the way, isn't there? Oh, absolutely, yep. It's, yeah, it's completely different every day, every uh, couple of Ks, it seems completely different. You're kind of thinking, oh, it's all just going to be desert country. No, you've got salt flats, sand dunes, beautiful desert oaks, every hue of red and magenta you can think of. Yeah, uh, yeah it's really, really uh, stunning up rock formations, you know, um, it's incredible. So to give you an idea, it took us 16 days to do the canning. I think a really good starting point for how long it's going to take you is somewhere between two and three weeks. 14, 21 days, uh, I think, would be a good um, amount of time to take off. We prepared for at least 21 days on the yep. track with food, water, supplies, etc. Yeah, and then sort of an extra emergency provisions <coughs> after, well after that 21 sort of days because... Things do happen. You've got to be prepared for, A, not a lot of people driving on the track. Now, a lot of people do drive on the track, and you'll come across a lot of people in your travels along it, but being prepared for no one for five days is at least a good starting point. Yeah, definitely. Um, so back to, I suppose, more stats, Adrian. So what was our fuel usage, roughly? 343 litres of diesel uh, for the trip. We averaged 20 litres per 100. Now... As we sort of mentioned before, you are slow, low range to high range driving. You're in full drive. Your tyres are down to the bejeebas to not tear up things. So you are going to use a lot of fuel. And sometimes you get a bit excited and you like to have a little bit of speed going up some of them. So you burn more diesel. Exactly. And then we found we also probably used a little bit more diesel idling waiting for the truck. Yeah. At the start there, we, we weren't getting a lot of Ks done in the day we did our lowest day was 81 kilometers in the day our biggest day was 181 k's and we do a lot of driving in exactly those days. so that 81 kilometer day we were probably still driving for close to eight hours yeah and the larger your convoy the more you're going to be stationary the more the slower you're going to be you've got to wait for people like just got to wait for matt to do his hair in the morning before we start know, like it, it takes, takes so a long <laughs> got to wait for the dunce hat to be passed on <laughs> ellen <laughs> <laughs> so on fuel usage, uh, so gone are the days where you had to do fuel drops on the canning. So you can fill up at Well 33 or Kanawaraji is the Indigenous community there. We filled up for $3 a litre, it's subsidised, so we thought that was pretty good. Uh, so the first leg is for us, because we were going north to south, uh, 51 to 33 is the shorter leg of the trip and then 33 to 1 is the longer leg. So on the longer leg, how much fuel did we use? Uh, longer leg was 191 litres and the short leg was 152. Okay, so you've got to have around 200 litres fuel capacity uh, at a minimum to even get you the distance if you are using around the same litreage that we were. Keep in mind we're in 70 series, so the V8s are going to be using a bit more than maybe like your Prados, your Hiluxes, things like that. Um, that being said, obviously you want a good buffer with fuel. So how much capacity did you have on board? I had 240 on board, uh, and also note, we did go to every single well. So you can sa shave a few kil kilometres off by not visiting every well. But did you do the canning if you didn't visit any well? Exactly. Every well? So we did make a point because it is such an effort to get out there and do the track to spend our time on it and to see everything out there. I think the longest well was around well, I want to say 10, but that might not be correct. And it was 10 k's in. It was the day that it rained. Maybe it wasn't 10. 12, yeah. 18, something. Cue the number here of the well, mm. but 
It yeah, was up I in the remember. teens, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah it was near. Like it was eight each way. Yeah, eight yeah. kilometers each way, and that was again a very slow track in and out. Um, most of the other wells are shorter or just off the track, but yeah, that's a good point to kind of mention. Is if you are going to do everything, you will do a few more k's. Yeah, and you guys, your when we're talking about diesel capacity, you guys had a substantial amount. Had. We, we yeah had we <laughs> had a, a substantial amount. So, by the way, if you haven't actually watched the videos of us doing the canning, it is a what is it a ten part series, a nine, part. nine part series uh, of us doing the canning stock route. So you can watch it start to finish. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely go back and do that. Uh, but you will see that we actually had a sub tank failure, Brown Davis sub tank failure. We had a large five inch crack appear in the bottom. Diesel was um, flowing out. And we lost probably around 40 litres. We do have 270 litres of capacity, but we just wanted that extra buffer. Uh, well, it's lucky we did. Um, we were able to transfer the diesel into Adrian's uh, and Cam's 70 series and into Jerry's as well. Yeah. So we were that sort of interim carrying capacity for Matt to feed it back to him when he needed it. Yeah. So it just goes to show that having a buffer is handy. Um, I mean, obviously you don't want your tank cracking and, you know, but you just got to have a bit of a uh, bit of leeway, I think. And I think that's pretty important. It's all part of the preparedness of the track. Um, I suppose moving on to, you know, what you do need to be prepared for and um, gear you might need to bring, tools, spares, etc. I don't know. Do you want to start us maybe with spares that you would probably have had on the trip? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um... And I wish I actually took more spares. I didn't need them on the canning, but uh, later on, you'll find out I did need them. It's coming out in a bit. It's coming out soon. Um, so we just sort of carry your basics being your liquids, your filters, your belt, some hoses, just your main sort of components. Uh, we're still sort of young vehicles, so there's no CVs and axles that we're taking at the present. Um, we try to be light and not push those components but I'm touching wood like anything right now because next trip it's going to happen um. yeah that's right uh, and then besides that just all your basics wire duct yeah. tape glue yeah. super glue you know it yeah. sounds silly but it can really get you out of trouble mm. yes soap yes the old <laughs> soap to fix fuel tanks soap to fix fuel tanks I think I had about a hundred people suggest that I use soap soap would have fixed it up straight away we tried. We did. Yeah. We tried. We even had two-part yep. tank repair putty, yep. and that didn't work either. And then people said, oh, no, no, I have better putty. And we tried okay. different soaps for other people <laughs> out there as well. There was many different bars from a yes. few motels. Yeah, and also um, we had dry lube. We tried that as well. But the issue was obviously diesel is oily. Um, back onto spares, other things we carried, zip ties. I think most people's vehicles are held together with zip ties. I know Elsie yep. certainly was, so that's definitely something good to bring. We might now talk about food and what we packed in terms of that. And speaking about food, I need another beverage. Ooh. Ooh. What are we drinking, Adrian? Ellen can tell us. Alberino, 2021 vintage. Adrian's favourite. And the dog, in El yes, that is a dog in Ellen's arms, <laughs> is named after the, uh, the uh, wine as well. This is Alba. She is a teacup poodle, nine <laughs> months old. <laughs> Alrighty, so food for the canning. So we had uh, a freezer in the car. We had our centre console as a 15 litre freezer and we had a 8 litre freezer in our 85 litre upright. Uh, and that got us enough food because we packed it quite intelligently. We uh, took meat out of packets, we put it in Ziplocs, we vac sealed, and then we also had some pre-cooked meals that we portioned up and froze at the bottom of the uh, freezer. And that was uh, that way we were able to get at least 21 days worth of food on the track, uh, which was great. Yeah, yeah, we were very much the same. Cryvac frozen <laughs> meats in a freezer, we have that ability. Look, if you didn't have a large freezer capacity and prep. Do a lot of meal prep, cryvac it. cryvac meats last a while. That you can see out your trip just on cold cryvac meat. So you don't really need a freezer. Yep. Um, and having some meals prepared, Ellen did some beautiful meal prep while we're there. And for those days where you are buggered, mm. you don't want to sit there and cook up a big meal, 
it makes life so much easier, especially if you have a breakdown. They're perfect for those days. Exactly. And if you don't have time to do meal prep, another thing that is really quite useful is taking those dehydrated meals that you can buy from camp stores. They are on the expensive side, but they are, again, really good for those days where you can't be bothered or shit has literally hit the fan and you don't have time. Um, Yeah, they're actually pretty tasty. Okay, so moving on to water on the canning. Surprisingly, it's uh, one of the easiest things to get. I've actually had more water on the canning than uh, most other trips. It's because some of the wells have been repaired. So not all of them. Most of them are in a state of disrepair. I'd say one out of every five is probably good to go. Uh, So, yeah, you have access to water. It might not necessarily be fresh or... uh, uh, potable. It was probably potable. I mean, you can, you know, boil it if you need, really need to, but there are wells with pretty decent water. In yeah. It. So it's sort of a really good idea to have a filter uh, and a means to pumping it out of the bucket into your, or the well bucket thing, apparatus, no words, um, into your vehicle. Not many cars have a, a pour in function. So we were lucky to have 12 volt pumps and actually with the truck has a big seven stage filter and a bore pump. So we can actually suck directly from the well rather than using the winch. All right. So another thing that you really, really need on the canning stock route is a UHF. So the channel for the canning stock route is channel 40 and you just need to do call outs. It's absolutely paramount. So we found when we were driving, we would leave a well, uh, let's just say, you know, well, 26, we'll just say three car convoy heading south, leaving well 26. And then that would just give any cars in the immediate vicinity a point of reference to know where we are. Uh, we were using HEMA maps as well. And I think a good thing about using a standard sort of map like that, like HEMA, is uh, you can even just call out little points in the map. You know, it might be BM265. Yeah. Any we little references point. on the map if you can't work out the cage distance you've travelled from well, because that's always a fun one. It depends on what mapping you're using. You'd, if someone says, I'm 5.6 k's from well 41. It's kind of a little, yeah. I find it difficult to go. Yeah. Oh, Especially when we? you're driving. Yeah. yeah. So we did have paper maps and uh, HEMA maps on our head unit, for example. You did as well. Yeah, we run it. Uh, the good thing about having it on our head unit, we're actually just able to see a GPS location. So really handy. I can definitely recommend if you have an iPad with, that has GPS and cellular, cellular to get the HEMA maps because you can have your GPS location. Very, very handy. Uh, besides that, definitely take some paper maps just so if all that fails, you can refer back to that. Yeah, it's, it's a real changer having... GPS based software at your fingertips. You know, we still result to maps and stuff like that, but in the car, we have it in the head unit, we have the iPad, and we're looking at them, and it is, it's really nice. And tying it in with UUHF and just making sure people know where you are, it's uh, definitely going to save you a huge headache. Potentially, we were just talking about that a uh, tour group actually had a head-on collision with someone that wasn't doing call-outs and wasn't on channel, and it uh, sent 20 people home off the tour. And, I mean, obviously, besides that, um, ending your trip or maybe a big recovery bill, you could get injured or, and yeah, even worse. So We, we had it on this trip on the Canning. Uh, it was a vehicle that you guys nearly yeah. come out. Too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. We had, we had a vehicle just didn't call out at all, and uh, we had just done a call out, and uh, yeah, I could tell they just weren't even on channel or or something like that. So definitely get on that. Uh, besides that, obviously a sand flag is very necessary because you are doing a lot of dunes on the canning. There are fifteen hundred dunes that you're going to be cresting, so you need a sand flag. That's paramount as well uh, for safety. And sort of more on sort of safety and that sort of thing is. A means of communication in a longer band sort of sense. So EPIRB, sat phone, sat phone, not sat phone, <laughs> or Starlink was a wonder for yes. you. Yes, like having was, Starlink. Yeah. Yep. So that's just, uh, if anyone doesn't know what that is, it's a satellite-based internet. It's Elon Musk's internet. It is fantastic. Uh, we actually used it in the Simpson Desert. Yep. Uh, we had a, well, Adrian had mm. a failure in the Simpson Desert. Rear bearing. You will see the video coming yep. up soon. But essentially we just left them the Starlink and we were able to head off to Alice and he was able to do click and collect yeah, for Reptile on the, the Desert. Yeah, all the parts, contact Terrain Tamer, have it, everything there off the catalogue. Search the catalogue online. Fantastic. It's yeah. pretty good. So sort of leads me on to the next point with the canning is if something does go wrong, you really are out there by yourself. So there's, you know, either one or two, two ways you're going to do it. If something does go really wrong, you've either got to figure it out yourself uh, and do a repair yourself, or you're up for a recovery bill starting at around $15,000. Yeah. So 
just keep that in mind with your insurances and things like that. And just, uh, yeah, just yeah. have that buffer ready. And I would recommend going in a convoy for that reason uh, to give you a hand if you need. And need in the, in the last sort of year, there has been uh, some dramatic uh, situations that have happened on the Canning. Uh, unfortunately, someone did lose their life. Um, so being unprepared or not being safe at any point is, it's the wrong place. It is absolutely the wrong place. You Definitely. know, 35 grand to get your car dragged out or unfortunately what has happened, not leave the canning. Mm. Exactly. So yeah, just definitely some important points there. Um, well, what are we going to move on to next? So I suppose next we'll talk a little bit about the landscape. So what you are going to encounter, as Matt mentioned before, there are 1,500 sand dunes on the canning stock route. Personally, for me, I wasn't expecting it. I suppose in my research of the canning, people didn't really talk much about the sand dunes. Um, So I was a little bit surprised to find so many. So my advice would be if you want to do the canning stock route, try and do at least one Simpson crossing first just for experience. Yeah, that's a really good one for preparedness for it. Mm. Yeah. Know how to drive in sand. Yes. Yep. Yep. So that's just letting your tyre pressures down, uh, taking an easy approach. Some of the sand dunes are quite chopped up from the traffic. You had sort of, we call them moguls or wombat holes. Yeah, you know, wombat a, holes a, in the opposing, WA, don't they? Yeah, yeah. opposing holes. So, uh, you know, you can't really get much momentum up. So you're going to have to let your pressures down and you're just going to have to um, figure out a way to sort of crawl up most of them. Um, besides that, there is plenty of other terrain. There's salt flats, uh, which you do not want to drive around. Definitely go on the roads that have been driven before on those salt flats because even when we were out there camping on a salt flat, uh, yeah, it was a thin crust on top and then, and then soft mud underneath. Uh, so I know a couple of uni mogs a few years ago got caught out there and then, I mean, recovering those things, it was mining equipment going out there and uh, they ended up getting bogged as well. So definitely uh, watch that kind of stuff. Uh, down south, there's more cattle country. Um, yeah, and you've got a sort of bit of a rocky section through the middle there as well. So you might think about, oh, those tyres should be okay. It's only sand. I've got nothing to worry about. If they're near, if anything is near failure or at the end of its life, change it. Just yep. do it. It will cost you nothing in the long run because if you're out of, if you're going two spares, for say, and you do both of them, you're stuffed. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. If you've been thinking about doing that oil change, you've been thinking about doing your bearings, you've been thinking about changing your air filters or this or that, just do it before the canning because your car really needs to be in tip-top shape. As we said, it's not just a matter of endurance for people, it's a matter of endurance for vehicles. I think every vehicle in our group had some issue yeah. of some sort at yeah. one point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it is a test on your vehicle. It is a test on you personally. Um, and sort of on the vehicle, if you're carrying parts, know how to fit them. There's, you could be the greatest part carrier for the next car that comes along. We would have loved to have seen part carriers on it in, in our travels, <laughs> yeah. but you know, you need to know how to fit those things. There's no point taking a spare if you can't fit it or change it. Have an Adrian. <laughs> everybody go. needs everyone. New merch, actually, we're actually all wearing uh, some of the new merch. We've got the everyone needs an Adrian shirt. We've got this new uh, piece here with the new Troopy, new Junior merch and some new Elsie stuff. So We're definitely quite snappy today. Have a look really? at that. Yeah, Actually, we have a patch to give you as well. We oh, patches, love patches. One thing we didn't chat about just then was the corrugations. That's another thing you're going to encounter on the canning is hectic corrugations, most around the community, well, 33, but you will also get them between dunes at each end. We didn't discuss tyres either. And that's probably because none of us actually blew a tyre on the Kenny, did we? No. Yeah. We're all very lucky. When did we plug that tyre? That was the Ni- Niangamata track, mm. yeah. Yeah, so. so I feel I recommend at least two tyres per vehicle. We were lucky. Mm. Matt and Holly carried two. We had one spare. Um, we've got the same size, so that was handy. We could have shared if we yeah. needed, yeah. Um, but we did pass a lot of people who did have a blowout and had to plug the tyre. Yeah, we did actually pass one vehicle that had had four tyres yeah. that he had done. I think he exited the track around Newman, got more tyres and then went back on the track. So that's a great point. Cameron Court had one spare and then they carried one skin as well. Yeah. Yep. 
So one thing that can really get you out of trouble is just a plug kit. Uh, it wasn't on the canning, but later on in this trip, you will see in upcoming videos, we actually had a sidewall puncture, I think three or four plugs, and uh, fixed it right up. Yeah, it was, it was three in one hole. Mm. Yep. In the sidewall. So little, little stick straight in. There's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter how good your tyres are. That happens. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it got us out of trouble. We didn't need to take the tyre off. We didn't need to mess around with spares, jacking the car up, blah, blah, blah. All good. So air compressor is really, really handy for that on the trip. Plug kit is also, I would say, a must on the trip. Well, yep. it is. It's a must. Definitely it's a get must. a, a yeah. good plug kit. ARB do a really yeah, good plug kit. They do a great yeah. plug kit, also for the price. It, mm. It's hard to compete with. The tooling in there is so easy to use. That's the yeah. thing. It, you can. There's many other plug kits out there, but that tooling for the price, I think, is great tooling. Yeah. And if you get it, actually learn how to use it as well. Just go on the internet and actually watch a video on how to yeah. use it because some people might open up and go, how do you actually use these things? So definitely check that out. So moving on to probably my favourite aspect on the canning, and that was the camping. I think... The camping for me personally was probably the best I've ever experienced around Australia. We were able to have a campsite to ourselves uh, all but one night. There was yeah. another night, but we couldn't even see them. We knew they were there in the campsite, but there was one very busy camp, Derbera Springs. Definitely go there. It's worth looking at, but it's uh, just really, really popular. Besides that, we got really lucky. You know, oh, Absolutely. Like the nights we're able to film, capture, like there's all those beautiful time lapses that you guys do. And just sit around for what, so for what fourteen nights we had mm. absolutely by ourselves on the trip. Yeah. yeah, which was pretty amazing because there was only one day we didn't pass another vehicle. Every other day we saw at least one vehicle. Um, with the camping, a lot of the camps are associated with the wells on the canning. There was one night that we just literally had to peel off the track and make a camp. That was the day that the truck had broken and we literally couldn't drive it any further. And I think by that time it was like. 4 4 30 so getting really quite late in the day um the track at the moment was very well sorry this year just gone was very overgrown as well so you actually couldn't camp off the track as you can do in other tracks on other tracks yeah there are definitely points where the growth uh the new growth and the rain that they've had out there is you know it's just really made it quite impassable in some some points like you look at some of these parts of the tracks and you think i'm not even going to walk through that let alone drive yeah. through it so uh if you really like your car or it's brand new or something like that yeah. get a wrap yeah absolutely get a wrap um obviously matt and hole have bush wraps and i got bush wraps for this trip uh put it on myself probably did the sh most shocking installation i can fix a lot of things but it seemed like a simple, simple task, but anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it did the job. That's the point. I saved thousands of dollars of paintwork, and I love Bertha. I don't want to see it scratched. Um, so now I can peel it off, and it's good as new. We will, uh, yeah, hopefully get a video together soon of the scratches on the one part of our vehicle, our roof conversion, that hasn't been wrapped compared to our body, and it's chalk and cheese. So it's definitely something to think about if you really like your vehicle. Yeah. Um, Back to camping, the kind of camping you can expect, uh, you know, we were in sand dune some nights. We were on open salt flats on Lake Disappointment, which was epic. Uh, camping amongst desert oaks is probably one of our favourite. You can hear the wind whistling through the trees. So it's really something to look forward to in the canning. It's definitely some of the best camping we've ever done. And there's heaps of spots and you can just find a spot even that's not marked and you can just go off the track, you know, 100 metres and you can find some epic places. So there's heaps of camping on the canning. There was one well. Which well was it? And it was not very nice there. So Ooh, all I can yes, say is yeah. bury your poo, please, yeah. and your toilet paper yes. or burn it. Yeah. yeah. It's not pleasant for everyone else. Definitely. Um, there are a few toilets, talking about that, there are a few toilets along the track, um, a lot that have been placed there by track care. But if there are not toilets, make sure you do your business properly. Because, yeah, unfortunately, there is a bit of rubbish out there with toilet paper. Not nice. No, not <laughs> nice at all. <laughs> it takes away from your flowers, doesn't it, Elle? Yes. It does. <laughs> Another thing we had out there, which Ellen will talk about in a second, is amazing wildflowers. Obviously, when we did the canning this year, there was a lot of unseasonal rain before we started. So there was a bit of flooding at Well 46, which had subsided um, by the time we got there. So we were able to drive around it. But due to the rain, there was a lot of growth and also some wildflowers. Yeah. <laughs> what were your favourite? Oh, they would have to be in the paper daisies were my favourite. 
So I think it just plays into just how pretty it is out there. I mean, you know, you've got your flowers and your desert scenery, but also all these rock formations. You've got indigenous rock art that you can see. Uh, there's a huge variety out there. That is one of the, another one of my favourite points of the canning was just how pretty it was out there and the landscapes that you see and just how remote it feels and mm. really does feel like an adventure, right? Eh? Yeah, it does. It's like when well, that first time when we did the Manigan line, it has that sort of feel. This is these are one of the last sort of tracks in Australia that do still have somewhat a remote feel to them. Um, that aren't they are heavily driven, but um, you can still feel like you're on an adventure. Also, just on supplies, as we said, at Well 33, you can get fuel at the community there, Kunawaraji, but there is a um, community store uh, that is actually really quite well provisioned. Yep. So you can get your frozen food, um, just lots of other supplies, food, um, every, anything you could really need out there, milk, bread. Yeah. They've got it. So if you need something, they will probably have the basics. And they also do have, which we all loved at that point, is the ability to have a shower, a mm. proper yeah. shower. Uh, so I think that's uh, $10, $10. But you can also, it's free use for the washing and Correct. washing machine. Yep. So if you are planning on doing the canning stock route, we are in the process of writing an ebook about our experience. When we were on the track, we would refer to a book that Cam and Court did purchase. It's called The Four Wheel Driver's Guide to the Canning Stock Route. It was written in 2019, so there were a few things that had changed um, from when that book was written to when we did it. But that was really nice every morning to wake up, read the book, see what train you were going to potentially drive past, what wells you would come up to, if they were ruins, if they had water. So I think that was quite useful just to have something tangible to look at yeah. every day. Help, mentally, help you mentally prepare for the day. <laughs> exactly. So wrapping it up, if you are thinking about doing the canning stock route, it is definitely one that you need to do a bit of prep for, but... It is well worth it. It has been my favourite trip to date. What yep. do you reckon, Adrian yeah, and Ellen? Hundred percent. It is. It was a really good trip. Yep. So uh, definitely get out there, do it. Watch our videos if you haven't yet, just to sort of get an idea of what to expect out there. Uh, but yeah, it's an absolutely fantastic trip. Besides that, as I said, all new merch here. So definitely jump on our website and have a look at that. Um, we will be writing an ebook on the canning, which you will be able to purchase at a later date. Besides that? Yeah, just if you've got anything else you want to know, just fire away in the comments on this thing. There's so much we could talk about the can canning and the day-to-days. Um, and, yeah, just ask away. And if you want to purchase any of Adrian's wine, we do have a discount code. OLT15 will give you 15% off. And it is bloody delicious. Had a few, yeah. It's had a few glasses here while I've been chatting. It's been very nice. We all need a refill. Yeah. We do. <laughs> That's why we're wrapping it up so Wrap we can, up, have, so we another can have another drink. drink. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. We are continuing our West Coast trip and we're going to be doing Dirk Hartog uh, Island later on. But first, we're going to be seeing Francois Perron and Steep Point. Beautiful. Beautiful parts of the country. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.